Could you please stand for the Mayor of Stratford-upon-Avon? Would you please stand for the Mayor of Stratford-upon-Avon? Good morning. Good morning and a very warm welcome to each one of you here in the church building joining us for our celebration of the Eucharist today and a warm welcome to those of you who are joining us online. I think our service was fully booked today so I'm glad that those who weren't able to be with us can join us through the internet. A particular warm welcome to the Mayor of Stratford-upon-Avon, Councillor Kevin Taylor and the Mayoress Pauline. It's Great to welcome you back today for this special service just a few weeks after you were last here for your official civic service. We meet together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Instead of an opening prayer, today we're going to have a call to worship which reminds us that each one of us is invited to participate in our worship to meet here with Jesus Christ and to see our lives changed through Christ's presence. 
So the first part of our call to worship uh, is going to be said. I invite the left-hand side of the church, including this side of the choir, to say that first part of our call to worship. The second part is going to be said on the right-hand side of the church, and the final part is said all together. Okay, fingers crossed. So we say, as people came to sit and listen to you, Jesus, when you taught them, so we too have come today to learn of you. As people left your side, changed by what they had heard, so we come willing to be changed. Help us to listen. Help us to change. Amen. Tomorrow, the 5th of July, is the very first of a new national day. It's called the NHS Social Care and Frontline Workers Day, held on the 5th of July because it's on that day in 1948 when our National Health Service was born. The date's been chosen as an opportunity for us as a nation, as a community, to show our gratitude to those who work in the front line, and especially those who've worked so hard caring for others during the last months of this pandemic. So in today's service, the day before that national day, we remember and give thanks for all those people who've been such a blessing to us over the past 18 months or so. In our reading today, we'll hear some words familiar to many of you, Jesus's Beatitudes. These words are a challenge and an inspiration to us to build communities that are places of blessing, where we bless one another by serving one another. The mayor has brought with him today a flag, which the town council uh, have bought in order to fly tomorrow. I think there are two actually, aren't there? One's going to be uh, flown over the town hall, and this one is going to be flown in the Garden of Remembrance, just around the corner. So this flag, this, it says on it, thank you, NHS and care workers. This flag will be blessed in our service today. And then the mayor will take it with him at the end, ready to be unfurled in the Garden of Remembrance, where a rose tree is also to be planted to remember those who have died and have, who served others during the pandemic. Our first hymn now is a hymn of praise, giving thanks to the God who strengthens and protects us. The choir sing for us, praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
prayers of penitence. We recall these words that Jesus said. Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. So as brothers and sisters, as we gather together today to offer our gift of thanks and praise, so we ask for our Heavenly Father's forgiveness as we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to our song of praise, the Gloria. Normally we would sing this together as a congregation. Sadly, we can't sing, but we've come up with a cunning way of being able to participate whilst not singing, and Phil is going to show us how to do that. Yes, so we're very fortunate that we will have our choir to sing, but anybody that wishes to join in, what we're going to learn today is some of the sign language that can be used in it, and I have my two wonderful volunteers. Shall we come forward? Yeah. Good girl, guys. You're doing fantastic here. Thank you. So we're going to show you what is the sign language for glory to God, okay? So, are we ready? So it is, everyone can see, it's Glory to God. Nice and simple. You're going to show it again? Ready? Glory to God. So if anybody would like to join in with it during the Gloria, you are very much welcome. Thank you. So we stand for the Gloria. As we remain standing, let us pray. (coughs) Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your Spirit, and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
So we go to our reading now, our gospel reading, for which we remain seated, and it's going to be read to us by Michael, Saul, Becky, and Bethany. According to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children children of God. God. Blessed are those who who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So our reading today is more commonly known as the Beatitudes, and it's part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And it's easy to just see them as a set of instructions, a way to live. But for me, they're more about how to cope when we find ourselves in those situations, words to give us comfort when we find ourselves in difficult times. Something as England supporters will often know, There can be many great difficult times following England, but hopefully at the moment it's coming home, at least till Wednesday anyway. But as today we focus on the NHS, social care and frontline workers, I thought rather than me just telling you about them, I thought it would be better to actually let them tell you their own stories and their experiences of working on the front line during COVID. So I've put together a video of different people's experiences, and I'd like in particular to thank Mrs. Herrero, the head teacher of Holy Trinity Primary, for sharing her experience in the video and some other stories that I came across. So hopefully we can watch this video now. This is my home station. That's Jopo. Uh, this is our two meter distancing. Before you go on to tube, you have to sanitize your hand. That's UCLH. Um, that's COVID 19 hospital. Uh, that's it. This is why we are open every day. I'm back at home now. And Everything I bought, the shopping, the nails, everything straight into the bathroom. Got wiped down before going into the house. Got myself changed as well. Everything I'm wearing. Everything stay in the bathroom. Okay, I'm gonna use this to just wipe. No, I think I've got the bacteria somewhere here. I've got my antibacterial wipes here. Yeah. I'm so proud of my teaching team. And I think the fact that There were so many services, obviously like the NHS and and other services like that, where we all felt like we had a really important part to play in a very significant period of our lives that we will never forget, let's face it. These times are so unprecedented and to be in a position that you could actually make a difference that made, that, that, was, that was so important. Okay, so hand over done in my very fitting scrubs, as you can see, rocking the bump. Um, I'm 30 weeks pregnant. Um, it makes doing 
COVID stuff quite difficult, um, but with the specialty that I do, I was always very adamant that I was going to stay on the front line. Something someone asked me was how I was finding it, and I guess no different to usual. And what I mean by that is, I guess when you're a doctor in the NHS, you have a certain mindset and you work really hard all the time regardless. Um, and every day you just try and get through what you're presented with. Having faith as well um, was obviously gives you an extra strength because there's an extra special um, person that you can you can share your innermost worries and concerns with when sometimes you don't feel you can share them with other people. So we have um, two funerals today. Uh, one's a fairly traditional uh, service at a crematorium, uh, but with only four attendees. Um, and the second one this afternoon is a direct cremation uh, where there will be no family attending. Uh, it's a standard service, apart from the fact that um, there's only going to be four people there. So under current government guidance, immediate family only, other friends who wish to come uh, will be joining by webcast. We've got a direct cremation, which many families are choosing at the moment, um, with a view to having just uh, the funeral, or well, the practicalities of the funeral undertaken. Just want to do, uh, share with you the differences. As you can see, all the chairs in the chapel have been spaced at two metres. A good day would be when you were able to help a family out for a specific thing that was just really important to them. I can't really give individual examples, but it was often the small things that we did. Um, that reached out specifically to an individual family that might have needed something at the time because our job wasn't just about teaching it was about making sure people had enough food to eat it was making sure that people had enough services to support them because the pandemic obviously it wasn't just the issues that arose were not just around the virus itself they were around people losing their jobs um, missing out on things um, perhaps you know around children who had anxiety but they might be the only child in the house so we had to try and reach everybody that we could um, and the children and parents and families who needed things that were different to the things that we might normally provide in an everyday school day or week um, those were the things that, that we had to consider as well and actually it was extremely rewarding and I was very proud to do it really. So I've just come out of the supermarket. There's no fruit and veg. I had a little cry in there. I'm a critical care nurse. I've just finished 48 hours of work. I just wanted to get some stuff in for the next 48 hours. There's no fruit, there's no vegetables. I just don't know how I'm supposed to stay healthy. And those people, and people who are just stripping the shelves of basic foods. And obviously, as far as Holy Trinity is concerned, um, our links are, have always been strong. We have a very strong bond with Holy Trinity, but it's been really special to reach out to to them and ask, you know, you know. We need a, there's a child who needs an iPad, can you help out? And, and the church has helped with things like that, it's been fantastic. But also things like normally um, Patrick or Phil would come in, do assemblies, that hasn't been possible. But what they have done is they've done an assembly virtually linked to us at school where they've actually been in the church and they've been able to talk about things in the church. And I think this is a technology that we might continue to use at certain times that are relevant. It's been a privilege, really, um, to have a role to play in these times and to make choices that you know have made a difference to people. And, you know, to just thank the school community, really. That's everybody. Um, parents obviously are amazing pupils they have been fantastic 
the teachers, everybody who works in school, you know, the ladies in the office, Lisa and Rosie, have done a phenomenal job during lockdown and I've been so proud of all of them. Um, so, and, and of course, you know, the teaching assistants as well. Everybody has had a role to play. And uh, so I would just really want to thank everybody for that. The last year has been hard and challenging for many people and in many different ways. I think especially challenging for those working in the NHS and other frontline services. Because as we heard in our the stories there that in our video, they were dealing not just with the lockdown and the restrictions everybody else had, but having to go out and try and do their jobs at the same time. And sometimes those jobs in really difficult circumstances. 30 weeks pregnant, but still on the ward. And so I feel that I think we should consider maybe having a new set of Beatitudes or something to go alongside those that we already have. Blessed is a supermarket worker being shouted at by a customer. Blessed is the teacher supporting families in ways beyond their job description. Blessed is the nurse who tells a family member they can't visit an ill relative. And I'm sure we could all think of many more. So as we begin to look ahead to the Otho quoted new normal, we cannot forget what has happened. We need to learn from our experiences. And I think it will be a disservice to every key worker not to reevaluate the value that we place on their work. Now perhaps I am a bit pessimistic and cynical, but I can't help but think of the times when something had been front page news and was really important and should change. But a few months later, another story had come across and things were back to how they were before. Well, I hope that in five years time, we will still have a thank you day and a day celebrating NHS social care and frontline workers but I also hope that that is the minimum that happens, that our new normal doesn't just fall back into being the old normal. Because as Christians inspired by Jesus, we're called to challenge what is wrong, to give a voice to those who have no voice. If we want to see God's kingdom on earth, we need to create it. My favorite quote or prayer is from St. Teresa of Avila, and it's one that I often remind myself of, of, and inspires me in my own journey of faith. As she says, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the compassion on this, you're the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. I think we should be able to bring up a slide with those words on, just as we think about maybe what those mean to us. So as we think of maybe how we are Christ's feet, Christ's body, to live out the Beatitudes, I think each of us has a role to play so that blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the peacemakers and the pure in heart. But how might we bless them? How may we make them part of the kingdom of God and be valued? And that is a challenge for all of us as we look towards our new normal. Amen.
Thank you, Phil. As we reflect on all the change and the trauma of the past year or so, so we remind ourselves now of the God who does not change and who loves us, whatever the circumstances. So I invite you to stand and join with me as we declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated as we come to our prayers of intercession. For our prayers this morning, we want to pray in particular for those of the different groups of critical workers. To represent each group, we are going to bring forward a piece of ribbon up to the altar. You may wish to hold them in your prayers as the ribbon is brought forward. We pray for those in health and social care, doctors, nurses, midwives, paramedics, social workers, care workers, and other frontline health and social care staff, including volunteers, those working as part of the health and social care supply chain, including producers, distributors of medicine, and medical and personal protective equipment. We pray for those who are sick and in need of our prayers at this time, remembering especially Scylla Burgess, Sue Hart, and Elizabeth Gotha. We pray for those in education and childcare, teachers, teaching assistants, support staff, cleaners, caretakers, nursery nurses and childminders and social workers. We pray for key public services, for those essential for running the justice system, religious staff, charity, workers delivering key frontline services, including the Stratford Food Bank, for journalists and broadcasters. We pray for undertakers and the difficult job they face, and we remember those who have recently died, remembering especially this day Jean Barron, Michael Jones, Ida Barber, in the year's mind, Rosemary Fraser. We pray for those involved in local and national government, those delivering essential public services, such as the payment of benefits, and those dealing with import and exports, and for all government agencies. We pray for producers and distributors of food and other necessary goods. For farmers, factory workers, delivery drivers, supermarket workers, shop workers. We 
pray for those providing public safety and national security, for police and support staff, armed forces personnel, fire and rescue services, security, prison and probation staff. We pray for all involved in transport, those who keep the air, water, road and rail, passenger and freight transport modes operating. We pray for utilities, communication and financial services, including those working in banks, building societies, and financial market infrastructure. The oil, gas, electricity, and water sectors, those involved in telecommunications, postal services and delivery, and waste disposal sectors. Everybody should have a piece of coloured paper. Over the last 18 months, there are people who have been a blessing to each of us, especially NHS, social care and other frontline workers, but also in other aspects of our lives. On your piece of paper, you may wish to write the name or a prayer of thanks for someone who has been a blessing to you. Or is there somebody or a group of people who need God's blessing? The poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You may wish to write your prayer for them on your piece of paper. As you leave today, the pieces of paper will be added to a rainbow, bringing all our prayers together. We now have time to write our prayer on our piece of paper. Loving God, may we be inspired by the works of these people, the risks that they took, and as they were a blessing to us, may we become a blessing to others, building your kingdom of love and peace. Amen. As Julian said, there's an opportunity at the end of the service to place your prayers on a rainbow, so there's plenty of time as our service continues to finish any prayers that you wish to write on those cards. We turn now to the piece, and I invite you to stand. And we're going to make use of these ribbons now as we express our unity together, as we always do each week, as we exchange with one another a message of peace. I'd like you, if you're close to one of the ribbons, just to hold it. Um, some of them have got more slack in them than others, but if you can hold it and hold it up. And just, if you can recall who your ribbon represented, as we express our unity together as a church community, 
and our desire to work together with those in our wider community, especially to support those who work for us. My friends, though we have been distanced, we are still one body in Christ. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As our table is prepared for Holy Communion, so we pray. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanks and praise. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You open our hearts to know your love and are always with us in the new challenges that we face. And now we give you thanks because the wisdom of your word sustains all things and reveals you to us in your fullness. You made us all, each wonderfully different, to join with the angels and give you praise.
thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. Why do we share this bread and wine? Listen and we will hear. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body, given for you all. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. How do we follow Jesus Christ? Listen and we will hear. Help us, Father, to love one another. As we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit today and forever. Amen. Let us pray that each day we might seek to care for others as they care for us, as we say the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. All who wish are welcome to receive the bread of Holy Communion, which will be brought to you where you are. If you do wish to receive, just hold your hands out flat so that the bread can be given to you. If you don't wish to receive, then we will offer you a prayer of blessing that we'll say silently. Just hold your hands down to receive a blessing. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
we pray together. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The beginning of the month brings uh, the beginning of a new set of bands of marriage where we announce forthcoming marriages. This is part of the legal process of getting married in this country within the Church of England. So it's a great pleasure for me to announce the bands of marriage between Jeanette Davy and Tim Owen, both of this parish. Some of you will recognise certainly Jeanette, who has been previously a bell ringer in this parish. Also between Lisa Davis and Sean Overbury, both of this parish. Also between Kaylee Malone and Ashley Ware, both of this parish. Also between Juliet Hayworth and Lawrence Kendall, both of the parish of All Saints Leamington Spa. Between Anna Jalowetsky, I hope I've got that right, and Alexander Scott, who are both of the parish of St. Lawrence Mickleton. And finally, between Lucinda Bennett and Richard Hewlett, both of this parish. These are for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry, you are to declare it. And do keep those couples in your prayers, especially having seen their pictures this morning, so you know what they look like as they prepare for their weddings, which are coming up in the next few weeks. Thank you. A huge thank you for all those who've contributed to our service today. Team two were on duty today, so thank you to that team. Also to Bethany and Eleanor, the girls who helped to lead our service as well. Well done, girls. That was great to have you part of our worship and really good to see uh, the, the fruits of this new approach to our worship of having uh, more people involved with creative uh, ideas uh, and energy going into our worship each week. A few upcoming events just to highlight to you. Tomorrow, we see the return of live music performances here outside worship, that is, as a concert uh, here at Holy Trinity. The Friends of the Music have organised a concert tomorrow evening. It takes place here. The start time is 7 o'clock. It has been previously advertised as 7.30. We've brought it forward so that during the interval, we can hear the bells rung and do our clap for uh, NHS staff and care workers. So we've tried to get the timing right, but it does mean the concert begins at 7 o'clock here in Holy Trinity. Tickets are available to purchase. Details about how to do that have been sent out in our bulletin, our, our emailed pew sheet. So do purchase a ticket. There are still some available if you wish to come to that concert tomorrow, which is being given by Lynn Arnold, the pianist, Roger Cool, and Nicholas Roberts. Some uh, music including piano trios by Beethoven and Brahms. So a real treat to have uh, a concert of live music here in church tomorrow evening. Do please come. We have a parish picnic coming up on the 25th of July, pray for good weather, in the Vicarage Garden. Uh, we would like to know who's coming, so if you uh, would like to come, please do book online. I think there is a sign-up sheet in the church somewhere. Has anyone seen that? No, okay. Oh, yes. Oh, I can see. Ah, Fiona is your person. Fiona, just stand up for me, would you? If you wish to just uh, book to come to the picnic and you don't want to do it online, then let Fiona know. And she'll show you where the form is. Great. Thank you, Fiona. Um, what else? Um, today, we continue to mark this two days, really, of remembering frontline workers and also those who have died during the COVID pandemic. This afternoon at three o'clock at Evesham Road Cemetery in the Tran Tranquility Garden, there'll be the unveiling and dedication of a plaque to remember all those who died during the pandemic. So the mayor and myself will be there. We've got a busy day today, haven't we? Uh, at three o'clock this afternoon. Anyone's invited to come. The town councils who've organized it would particularly like to extend an invitation to anyone who has been bereaved during the pandemic to come three o'clock at Evesham Road Cemetery. And then this evening here at Holy Trinity at five o'clock, we have a special service to remember those who have died in recent months. So you're welcome to come to that if you wish. We have asked people to book, but we have got a number of spare places, so we're sure it'll be fine if you want to just come this evening at five o'clock, that will be okay. 
And finally, next Sunday, our 10 o'clock service is a particularly special occasion. We welcome the Bishop of Warwick as he comes to baptise and confirm a number of adult candidates from this parish and also three candidates who are coming from St. James's Alveston. Their vicar, Richard Williams, is off sick at the moment, so they're coming to join us next week. So that'll be a really joyful opportunity to celebrate and um, support those candidates, some of whom are here this morning, uh, as they make this really important step in their journey of faith. So do please come. The service might be slightly longer than normal, but not too much longer. I've told the bishop not to preach for too long. Uh, so um, do, do come and be part of that, I did it subtly, uh, service. Um, Oh dear, this is going out live, isn't it? I hope he's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> the danger of live streaming. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. In a moment, I'm going to bless the thank you flag, which the mayor has brought with him today. And then he's going to take the flag from this service across the road to the Garden of Remembrance, where a rose tree will be planted and flag will be unfurled and he's asked me to extend an invitation to any of you who'd like to join us after the service to go straight across the road to the Garden of Remembrance for that brief ceremony there you'll be very welcome. So I'd like to ask you please to stand as I bless the flag. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we thank you for all those who work hard to care for others. So we pray for your blessing upon this flag, that those who see it may be reminded of the importance of caring for the weak and vulnerable, and that they might know that this care is a reflection of your love and provision for us. We ask this in the power of the Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A choir will sing now our final hymn during which I'll hand the flag over to the mayor. From thee all skill and science flow. Do please be seated. Our service concludes now with the blessing. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.